So Garrett told me this morning that I made Noah's life really difficult <laughs> the two days that I was gone editing the last video. She's a diva. <laughs> but it looks amazing. I am completely blown away by this table and I, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty close to speechless. <laughs> You're coming too. What started as a dream is now our reality. Oh Six years ago, we poured her ballast, raised every frame, cut every plank, and named her Red Aviva. Ready for life back on the ocean, this year we're determined yeah. to set sail. Would you look at that? I'd say that's the making of a fine cruising vessel. <laughs> We're Salt and Tar, and this is our life. We're happy to share, and thanks for joining us. Before we get to the table, we have a corner to round. What's today's headache project? <laughs> this is trim for uh, the top of the, uh, what do you call it, the bench? <laughs> yeah, I guess the bench, the aft bench seat there. So it will be laminated in multiple pieces. Sorry. That's all right. Like this. And then there will be another one that goes here. And a strip that runs down here. And then wrap it for the top of the the aft seat of our dinette is part storage underneath and part engine room. Because we built the engine box to be fully removable, this meant we had a puzzle to solve. How to make the backrest then also removable and yet sturdy? The answer? Trim. Secured to the removable part and attached to the stationary part with removable screws. And of course, I had to make it complicated with a heavy curve, but Noah's patient and tackled my demand. We first had to add an addition to the engine box so we had more surface area for fasteners. When you start this, uh -huh. just kind of help you line it up uh -huh. this way. You can look at this little notch right here. Okay. Theoretically, that represents one side of the blade. Going into the side of the plywood grain, uh -huh. uh, it doesn't really grab that foam. Okay. Um, so just go a little easier on those. Okay. Don't cinch them up quite as much. Beautiful. Yeah. 
We did it in two pieces so we could straddle the raw water hose that runs over top of the engine. adjustment before we can assemble the backrest trim. This is so the trim will tuck just under the side decks. Today I step up from just driving screws to learning how to place them and drill the pilot hole too. My first day in training, if you will. I've been increasingly wanting to get more involved and Noah just started putting tools in my hand and walking me through it. So I'm just looking through, you can see the light through there and where okay. it's hitting. I just want to take it so that, you know, the rest is close to where it's possible. It's not really critical in this situation, uh -huh. but the better we can make it, the stronger it'll be. that you ended up going with like the three layers too because it just makes it like you know an even bigger pretty piece of wood that you get a look at yeah you know or had to go make it complicated yeah again. her and her swoopies Yeah, inch and a quarter, and just make make them snug. Don't worry about about the they're heads. Yeah, okay. they're not gonna sink all the way in. Um, I'll finish drilling them after. Okay. Um, back back that out again. Okay. Now back in. Because it kind of like came apart a little bit. So uh, I wanted to make it tighter, and then it just 
<laughs> ran yeah. away from me. That's the problem with these, these curved pieces. The grain is not that strong. Nothing a little wood glue can't fix, I guess. <laughs> So while we're waiting for this to dry, we're gonna make essentially these, <laughs> three of them. One is gonna look more or less like this, about here, fastened in these two places into a backing block behind this piece. And that'll be our center point on the face here for the table. And then two more, it'll be kind of like that along the underside of the table. Yeah, so we're making these little guys. So eventually there will be a piece of trim here. So that's as far out as we can have the table be able to lift up anyway. This is our template. There's our pivot. The table is mounted to a copper bar so it can slide and tilt. We're now making the P brackets for the wall and the runners for the underside of the table. We've had a similar setup on a previous boat and I need it in my life again. Is that for the back end piece you think? Like where the leg is? It was going to be for the leg. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize I just had to get it a little bit longer than the long side. Oh. Yeah. What were these ones? Is that's that from the? That's just from this. Uh, we can use this one of these for a cross piece. Okay. Uh huh. I love that Noah salvages from scrap as I like to do. We work really well together, from creativity to execution. It also helps that he's a great teacher. I have little power tool experience, and I handled a lot for the very first time today. I clenched my jaw so hard. You could clamp if you wanted to. Yeah. yeah. Clamp it to the board, do half of it, and then yeah, move it I highly recommend to the ladies out there that have yet to work with anything greater than a sander to try it and challenge yourself. Yeah, with any of these tools, you, know, you know, want to think about like how you're applying pressure and yeah. like, you know, because like, you know, if you're cutting and you're also pushing toward the blade and something slips, right, or right. Like, you know, using this and it jumps, you want to make sure that your fingers are always like, like handling Able to bounce too. back. Yeah. You want them to go in the direction away from the blade or bit or whatever. Okay. If something should happen. Looks good. It was intimidating at first, but as I got familiar, it got easier. The hardest part was just being comfortable with the power. Why did it turn out so weird? Um, was 
Possibly like... because you're wobbling. Oh. So like if you wobble slightly this way, okay. uh, the bearing pushes it, the blade further away from the right? So that's what you can just start, you know, start there and go back. Oh, okay. If you redo that, it'll probably spread out. I'd just get comfortable with one when the project would require another tool and a new set of techniques. So the big thing on this is you want to, you can vary your speed, but you always want to make sure your speed is, your blade speed is a lot faster than your push Turning, speed. okay, okay. Um, and you also, I find I have a tendency Instead of just turning, mm -hmm. it, I a lot of times I want to push, like okay. I'm trying to push uh -huh. into the line. But what happens when you do that is you push the blade and it ends up cutting a bevel. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it ends up doing that. So you don't want to push sideways. You want to only move forward. Okay. And if you have to just back out of it and do little nibbles, okay, that's fine. Okay. This experience has taught me a lot. Not only new skills, but a greater appreciation for craftsmen. Garrett makes it look so easy, and editing makes it look flawless, as if everything fits the first time. But the reality of doing it yourself, it takes stamina. That's better than cutting too much. That can easily be cleaned up uh, by hand. I think it's better to leave it like that and just finish it by hand with a uh, uh, sandpaper on a block. Mm. So yeah, it looks good. It's hard to keep this from, you know, bending a little. Mm-hmm. Interesting to get used to. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Well, there's one. Doesn't look bad at all. Okay. We have a few more supports to add to the underside, but that's tomorrow's lesson. Class is back in session. Wood plugging, finish sanding, and dry fitting. 
the satisfaction of progress and the nuisance of it's only a dry fit, learning patience and stick to to succeed. fingerprints yeah do you want to tackle that oh okay saw? yeah let's try it no pressure <laughs> No, you're okay. Oh. It'll splinter, but that's okay. Um, if you move your work back so there's less overhang, okay, and move the plant closer to where you're cutting, uh -huh. it'll probably hold better. Well, that's made our decision. We're definitely planking it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> so that can go all the way to there. Uh, <laughs> uh, boom, all the way. Wow. Uh, Table. Boom. Oh yeah, and then this can go all the way up to there. Pretty far. Basically right to the edge. And that is going to be And then cushions. So we go square off of the floor. So that roughly loves the center of the leg. The work continues. Such is life. Personal progress and pushing yourself can be daunting, but be warned, you just might surprise yourself. That's a big taco platform. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lots of tacos. That's all I see. <laughs> I, feel bad, I, guess. I just wanted to be here all the time. <laughs> That's the good and bad thing about dry fits. It's like, it's always so, so excited good. and you're just like, damn it, I don't want to take <laughs> part. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Leave your comment below. <laughs>